that's one of the things that people in their first year of Cornerstone have the chance to do is to build that firm foundation and part of that is really being able to think through the sort of questions that I had when mm. I was at university mm. and to become more confident. Uh, it's sort of like putting roots down deeply for a tree so it's not blown over by the first storm that comes along. Mm. And then after that first year, in a year of mission, hopefully that'll all go deeper and also further out that you have the chance to engage with people on these issues. So thinking about how to be relevant and how to have answers for the kind of issues that the people in the circles that you're, in, you're involved with have. Mm. So it's making it, uh, turning it from theory to action. Mm. Um, from kind of like a science into an art that you develop. Ravi Zacharias said about the purpose of apologetics, that apologetic argument or persuasion by reason doesn't create belief, but it creates the atmosphere in which belief can come to life. Mm. Like parting the bushes so that people can see Christ. So hopefully, this is the part where I need to, it's easy to kind of keep looking at this. Mm. In your year of mission, you'll be able to share your life with people, take a real interest in them, love them, share your story, mm. talk with them about Jesus. And I think it's important to remember that apologetics, to actually have restraint when it comes to using apologetics, it's sometimes because some of us are so profoundly thankful for what we've been given in terms of the reason for our faith. We use it uh, at every opportunity when I think for other people it makes sense for them to first of all, for instance, read a gospel or listen to a gospel or see a gospel to understand something about Jesus and then have their questions answered, the questions that they've actually got. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can put the cart before the horse, you know, get it the other way around. And it's also worth remembering that um, it's not apologetic argument, as Ravi Zacharias was saying, that creates belief. Um, it's very helpful, but it's the Holy Spirit that will empower you to be witnesses for Jesus. And it's God's Spirit that will actually help people have a new life in Christ. In this unit, you're going to have the chance to think about the apologetic issues in the people that you're mixing with, in the circles that you're mixing with, the kind of questions they have, and then to try to understand what the assumptions they've got about those questions are, and you'll have a chance to really think through a response to those issues, or particularly to one of those issues, um, a response to the assumptions that they've got, and you'll get to actually do it to make a presentation so that you are moving in the direction of not just having this as theory, but being able to make it practical, um, being able to actually develop the art of apologetics yourself, which is a really valuable thing. Um, so for instance, in Bendigo, there are a lot of environmental science students and outdoor ed students. So many of those deep in, deeply value the environment, and in their classes they're taught that the Genesis creation mandate about ruling the earth and subduing it is one of the reasons that we're in the mess environmentally that we're in. Mm. And uh, so the question is, um, how do we respond to those questions that they have and those assumptions that they've got? Mm. We often go to Melbourne University and are engaging with students on spiritual issues and for quite a few of them more now than in the last few years, it's an increasing thing. Uh, there are quite articulate and even aggressive atheists who say that God is a human construct and that we create our own meaning. Mm. How do you engage meaningfully and fruitfully with people like that? What are their assumptions? One of them often is that Christians are anti-intellectual, that they're just soft when it comes to rational arguments and thinking. What are the apologetic issues for the people around you? What assumptions do they hold 
about those issues and how can you engage with them meaningfully and fruitfully. You want to be reasonable to be reasoned and it's also really important that you're relevant, um, that you can move them, not just emotionally, but move them to want to act to change. Mm. And don't forget that although people often imply or seem to imply that what you believe doesn't really matter, mm. that what you believe, the world view that you've got shapes all of your values and shapes how you live your life. So it matters hugely. Mm. And it's worth um, bearing in mind too that one of the strengths that you've probably um, appreciated in Cornerstone the what we call socialization the fact that you're not just learning the things that you're learning in theory but you're learning them in a social context in a community one of our great strengths can be turned against you when you're in a different social environment when you're at university or you, when you're in some other circle and you can begin to wonder did i only believe what i believe because everybody around me was believing it and it was being reinforced by the community so for you to do well in the environments you'll find yourself in, it's critical that you have a firmer foundation than just that. So this is a chance for you to be uh, to continue to develop that. So hopefully with this course, engage with apologetic challenges in Christian mission, you'll be able to deepen your own foundations and you'll begin to be able to make inroads with people that aren't yet Christians to break new ground to be able to turn the science of apologetics into an art and uh, may God make you fruitful. That's excellent. Uh, we went three minutes.